Thank you for watching this video. Today we will be doing technical analysis on the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday, September 10th, 2021. And for this analysis, we will be using stockcharts.com. That is the charting service that I use and pay for. And I will leave a link to their site in the description box below this video. My name is Rodney Constable. I have over 30 years of investing experience, including over 25 years of experience trading stocks and options. I am a former financial advisor, a former vice president of a major mutual fund company, and I am the developer and president of Simple Market Signals at simplemarketsignals.com. Now, we will come back to this chart in just a couple of minutes. However, I do want to start with the weekly chart of the S&P 500 so we know what happened for the week, and then we'll uh, get more granular as we look at the next three charts. So first off, the S&P 500 was down 1.69% this week. That's this candle right here. And by the way, this chart starts at the beginning of 2021. So this is a weekly candlestick chart of the S&P 500 for calendar year 2021 so far. The green line is the 10-week moving average, and the blue line is the 40-week moving average. So again, S&P 500 down 1.69%, and this is the first negative week that we've had in the last three weeks. But we are still trading above that 10-week moving average, and we are trading 8.56%. So where we close today, we're trading 8.56% above the 40-week moving average. So if the S&P 500 continues to pull back. And let's just say hypothetically, we're pulling back to the 40 week moving average, which we haven't done for quite a while. As you can clearly see, we haven't done that during calendar year 2021 yet. Uh, but if we're on our way down to the 40 week moving average, we have about another eight and a half percent more to go uh, to the downside. So that's if that's the case. The next chart that we're going to look at is a daily candlestick chart of the S&P 500 that covers the last two months. And the green line on this chart is the 50-day moving average. Uh, on the last chart, it was the 10-week. They're fairly equivalent, but uh, always not, uh, not always exactly the same. So I think one of the most important things to take away on this chart, guys, is the fact that we've now had five negative days in a row on the S&P 500. It doesn't happen all that often. The last time we had five negative days in a row was right here in February. So this particular chart, again, a daily candlestick chart covering February and March of this year. And you can see we had five negative days in a row uh, in February. And then we had a couple of positive days, a couple more negative, a positive, three negatives. And that took us down that, that uh, sequence there uh, that lasted about a, about a month or so from uh, the middle part of February to the early part of March, uh, where we finally had one day where we closed beneath that green line. Again, that's the 50-day moving average, and then we went right back to trading above it. So, uh, you know, we have had now five negative days in a row. Again, doesn't happen very often. For the week, of course, we know that that ended up taking the S&P 500 down 1.69%. And uh, you know, we don't know, right? We're in a weak seasonal period. Uh, August through October are traditionally, not always, but traditionally the worst three months of the year. So if we are going to pull back anytime during calendar year 2021 to the 40-week moving average, it would make some sense uh, that uh, it happens between now and, say, the middle to the end of October. However, there, of course, are no guarantees uh, interest rates are still really low. There's a ton of stimulus out there. So, um, and, and guys, just be super careful with any of these people that are, uh, you know, using clickbait type things and telling you that the market's going to crash. You know, what does that really mean anyway, right? Uh, I mean, do they consider a pullback to the 40-week moving average a crash? I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I stick to the facts and stick to the technical analysis. And right now, guys, yeah, we've had five negative days in a row, but we're still trading above the 50-day moving average, okay? So uh, it hasn't been horrific. We're down a few percentage points from the all-time high. Um, and with that, let's move on to a more granular chart and a really, really interesting chart. Now, this particular chart is a 30-minute, so each candlestick represents 30 minutes of trading, and this chart is the last 22 days of trading. So this takes us back to August 11th and, of course, through the 10th of September. Uh, so let's start over here on the left-hand side of the chart. And this blue line, by the way, is set at 4468. 
Okay, now this is an important level uh, for a couple of reasons, and I'll show you here as we as we move from left to right here. I'll show you why that level is so important. And uh, keep in mind, I made this chart a couple hours before the close, so uh, it really became important at the end of the day. But you can see um, where my cursor is moving here on the 13th of August. We got up to this 44.68 level, 44.68.37, but we closed slightly below it right here on that candle. It was just below that blue line there. And then we poked our head above that line, the 44.68 line on the 16th, for about an hour and a half. Keep in mind, each one of these candles is 30 minutes of trading. And then we had this sell-off. And then we had the rebound that finally took us up above the 44.68 level right here at the opening of trading on the 23rd. And we, stay, we have stayed above, unfortunately, up until the very last 30 minutes of trading today on Friday the 10th of September. We have successfully traded above, right? You can see there's no, even on the 30-minute candles, no 30-minute candles uh, either closed or even traded below 44.68 until the last 30 minutes of trading here on Friday the 10th. So, you know, we got as high as 45, 45.85 on the 2nd of September. So right at the open, uh, during the first half an hour of trading on the uh, 2nd of September, we hit what is right now the all-time intraday high on the S&P 500 at 45, 45.85, as you can see right here. Uh, and then we have slowly pulled back since then and again, what we're seeing is this last five days of trading, okay? So this is just a 30-minute chart, right? So we can see it on a little bit more granular uh, basis. But the fact that we closed beneath this 4468 line today for the first time, right? First time we've had any trading beneath that line since the opening of trading on the 23rd of August, um, that's not a good sign. Now, it doesn't mean that we'll continue to have selling next week. However, this is something that uh, we really need to keep our eye on. Um, you know, as long as we stay above the 50-day moving average, we're going to be just fine, right? But we know, right, just by looking at what's been happening, we're starting to see a slow, you know, roll-off in the markets here where we've closed. This is the first level that I was really looking at. So the fact that we have now closed beneath that 4468 level you know, on a 30-minute basis, let alone at the le very last hour of trading on a Friday, uh, that's not good. You know, we could, right, snap right back um, to, you know, trading above that level next week. You know, it's possible we could just jump right back and get right back uh, up above, you know, the, uh, the 4,500 level or so. And if we do that, you know, we've bought ourselves a little time. However, if we start to see trading beneath the 50-day moving average, then, you know, and especially if we have one or two days in a row that close beneath the 50 anytime soon, we know that we're starting to really see some deterioration and a likely scenario would be that we might pull back to the 40-week moving average, you know, over the next four to six weeks. The timing seasonality-wise is there, and we are starting to see some weakness in the charts. But... Uh, there are no guarantees. You know, this is not going to be, if, even if that does happen, guys, even if we pull back to the 40, that is not catastrophic. That is a normal market action. It has been quite a while since we pulled back to the 40-week moving average, and uh, it could give a lot of people an opportunity to, uh, you know, get into the markets or put some money to work that, uh, where people have been sitting on the sidelines. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, I don't, I don't think this is going to be catastrophic. You know, nobody knows for sure. Nobody knows for sure, right? Uh, nobody has the ability to predict the future. People can give their opinions. But uh, when we just look at the charts, yes, there's some weakness here. But so far, it is not catastrophic. And also keep in mind that, you know, five negative days in a row is pretty rare on the S&P 500. So it's very possible that next week we could get a little bit of a reprieve for a few days. And then, uh, you know, we'll have just have to watch it after that. So if Monday and Tuesday uh, or even Monday is positive, then we'll just have to be careful and watch the balance of next week to make sure that we don't roll back over. OK, so, guys, thank you for uh, for being on the video with me. Please, however, Pay attention to the next few minutes of this video because I have something very important to share with you and it could make a huge difference in your life over the next few years. So stay with me for at least a couple more minutes here. Let me ask you a few questions. 
Do you manage any of your own money, including in your 401k or your IRA? Have you ever found yourself out of sync with the market, underexposed when the market is rising or overexposed when the market is declining? If you answered yes to any of these questions, please pay close attention to the balance of this video because it could be worth a lot of money to you going forward. Do you have a stock market risk management and trend direction system in place? Do you know the various risk levels in the stock market on an ongoing basis? Do you know when it's safest to be in equities? Do you know when it's most dangerous to be in equities? Do you know the direction of the trend of the stock market? My system is Simple Market Signals. Simple Market Signals is market-based. There's no opinions, forecast, or guesswork in Simple Market Signals. It took me over 20 years to develop Simple Market Signals. I developed Simple Market Signals by reverse engineering the stock market, and I studied the stock market over numerous time frames, including numerous bull and bear markets. And what I found is that certain conditions exist during various market phases, and then I created simple, easy-to-understand signals around these different phases of the markets. And the thing is, guys, that most people don't know about or have access to the data necessary to do the research that I had to do to create this model. Simple Market Signals is a proprietary stock market risk management and trend direction model. And Simple Market Signals is perfect for financial professionals and individual investors. There's two major components to the proprietary model. There's a risk level signal and there's the general trend indicator. Let's start off with the risk signals. The risk signals are simply green, yellow, and red. The green signal has the lowest equity risk associated with it. And what you're going to find is that most all upward progress in the stock market will be made in a green signal environment. Said another way, it is hard to make money in equities unless the signal is green. The yellow signal means there's moderate equity risk, and sideways to slightly up or down price action is very common during a yellow signal environment. The red signal has the highest equity risk, and the worst sell-offs, including bear markets, will happen when the signal is red. A quick review of the risk signals. The green signal is the best risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors. And what you're going to find is that most upward progress in the stock market will happen in a green signal environment, as we see here. The red signal is the worst risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors. And what you're going to find is that the worst downturns, including the downturn in Q4 of 18 and the bear market in Q1 of 2020, plus the bear market from 2000 through 03 and the bear market of 07 through 09, all of those are going to take place in a red signal environment. Now let's put it all together and see how Simple Market Signals could have helped you during the fastest bear market in history, which of course happened during Q1 of 2020. We had a strong stock market coming into 2020, so the risk signal was green coming into 2020 and remained green for the majority of January. We did have a yellow signal for about two weeks towards the latter part of January, first part of February. And then, of course, the risk signal went back to green. And then on February 19th, we hit what was at that time the all-time high on the S&P 500. Again, that's February 19th. And then things started to unravel from there. But think about this. Just a few days after the all-time high at that time in the S&P 500, on Monday, February 24th, the risk signal went yellow. And then on Tuesday, the 25th of February, the general trend indicator went negative. And that general trend indicator had been positive since October of 19, okay? So right there, just a few days after the all-time high in the S&P 500, the risk signals started to tell you that something was changing, that there was increasing risk in the stock market. And by Thursday, February 27th, the risk signal was red. And then, of course, the market sold off hard from there. So think about this, guys. I mean, you talk about stress testing my model. During the fastest bear market in history just you know, that started just a few days after the all-time high at that time, the all-time high in the S&P 500, in one week, the risk signal went yellow, 
the trend indicator went negative, and then the risk signal went red, all in the same calendar week, actually within four days, right? Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So you talk about stress testing my model. Guys, I mean, this is the fastest bear market in history, and look at how simple market signals could have helped you during that time. With simple market signals, you will know what the risk level is and what the trend direction is in the overall U.S. stock market. And the proprietary model is based on S&P 500 data. The S&P 500 index really is the best proxy for the overall U.S. stock market. And it's the only index that has all of the data available that I need to run the model. And guys, it's not about beating the S&P 500. However, that is a possible outcome over time if the tools within the model are employed properly. It's about risk management and risk control. It's about controlling your risk exposure rather than letting the whims of the market dictate your future. The best fit for simple market signals is an investor or a financial professional with at least a six to eight week plus time frame that they're focusing on. If you're a shorter term trader or a day trader, simple market signals may help you a little bit, but the reality is that the best fit between simple market signals and a subscriber is somebody that has at least a six to eight week time frame or more that they're focusing on. These signals are delivered to subscribers in our weekly emailed newsletter. As part of the Simple Market Signals weekly newsletter, you will receive the proprietary risk level signal and charts on the overall U.S. stock market. You will also receive the general trend indicator signal and charts on the overall U.S. stock market. You will also receive a weekly recap of what happened in the U.S. stock market, including performance information and charts, and this is on multiple investments. So we cover small caps, mid caps, large caps. So you'll have a great idea of what's going on in the entire U.S. stock market across all capitalization. You will also receive technical analysis data and charts, so things that are interesting and educational that I think is important for you guys to know will be included in the newsletter on a weekly basis. You will also receive fundamental analysis data points on the S&P 500, so we look at potential earnings per share for the year, as well as the possible P.E. ratios, and then price levels looking out to the end of this year, and then I generally go out to the end of the next year as well. So you'll have great fundamental analysis data to work with on the S&P 500 right at your fingertips every single week. You will also receive yield curve information and data points. So we look at the, the twos and the tens. So the two-year treasury note, the 10-year treasury note, and then the spread, the differential between the twos and the tens. This information, guys, very few people know about it. Very few people watch this. This is so important to really get your head wrapped around because it affects so many areas of the financial markets. And you will also receive the proprietary risk level signals on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. So not only do you get the risk level signal on the overall market, but we also give you the risk level signal on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. So you can see what the risk level is underneath the hood on all of the individual sectors. And you will also receive sector performance information on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500 over multiple time frames. So guys, you're going to get all of this, right? And it's going to make you so much more knowledgeable about the financial markets. You're going to be able to have a conversation with virtually anybody about the stock market. And you're going to be able to really understand things at a level that very few people do. And guys, you're going to get all of this for just $19.95 per month. That's less than 67 cents per day. I want to set realistic expectations. The weekly emailed newsletter isn't fancy. It's effective. It's plain text, no color, other than the charts, of course, and no fluff. But it's chock full of extremely valuable information week after week. And please note, due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to subscribe to Simple Market Signals. And again, this is just due to international compliance regulations. A subscription to Simple Market Signals is just $19.95 per month. It's billed monthly on your credit card. There are no contracts. You can cancel any time. And your first two weeks are free. 
Sign up is quick and easy. Just go to simplemarketsignals.com. That's HTTPS colon two forward slashes simplemarketsignals.com. It'll take you about four or five minutes to subscribe. It's that easy. Once you reach the website, the first thing you will need to do is accept the cookies. Please notice that due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to use this website or our services. And that is just due to international compliance regulations. All right, so to get started, all you have to do is click this green button, and that will take you to the product page. And this explains, of course, uh, what you get with your subscription. And then just make sure that that says one, because if there's more than one in there, if you have a two or a three, you'll get multiple subscriptions to the service and you only need one. Click the sign up now button and that will take you to the checkout page. Once you're on the checkout page, fill in the necessary information, anything that is required, including the email address. Keep in mind that this is an email newsletter, so we will have to have your best email address on file. And make sure this box is checked because that's how your email address gets into the system. So if that is unchecked, your email won't get transferred into the Simple Market Signals system and you won't get your newsletters. So please make sure that box is checked. And then, of course, uh, just double check. Make sure that your monthly total is going to be nineteen ninety five a month. Remember that your first two weeks are free, so your first renewal date will be two weeks after your subscription date. Fill in your credit card information. You will need to accept the privacy policy and check that box that uh, says you've read and agreed to the terms and conditions. Click the Sign Up Now button, and it's that easy, guys. It's probably going to take you maybe four or five minutes total to fill in everything and subscribe to Simple Market Signals. A few points to remember with respect to your subscription to Simple Market Signals. Remember that everything is tied to your email on file. Now, once you subscribe, you will get an immediate emailed confirmation of your subscription. You will also receive an automatic welcome letter, so that's automatically generated from our system. And whether you see that welcome letter or not, I would encourage you to double check your spam, junk, trash, and promotion folders, especially for the first several weeks of subscription, because once in a while, our emails get automatically routed into one of those different folders, depending on your email service provider, whether it's you know Gmail, Yahoo, whatever it may be. Uh, and I would get in the habit. I would encourage you to get in the habit of every week or two, you know, just go out real quick and double check these different folders, these spam, junk, trash, and promotion folders, because I can't even tell you how many times I've had people say, "Well, I didn't get the email," and then when I tell them to go out and check those various folders, oh, there it is. So uh, it's just you know the reality of of uh, having an emailed service that once in a while, and it's going to vary from email service provider to email service provider, but once in a while. The uh, emails from us, depending on the subject line and other things, will get automatically routed into one of those different folders. Also, I would encourage you to whitelist all emails from Simple Market Signals. In other words, just you know, make sure that your email service knows that you want all Simple Market Signals emails to go to your primary in basket. Also remember that newsletters go out on the weekend. Okay, They generally go out Saturday afternoons, but they could go out any time over the weekend depending on our production schedule. And the next new edition will be sent to you on the weekend following your subscription. So if you subscribe on a, you know, a, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it is, the next new edition is going to come out on that weekend following your subscription. But we will also send you the latest edition. So whatever the most recent edition of our newsletter was, we'll send you that latest edition as soon as we can, but we have to manually send that to you. Generally, you will receive that within 24 to 48 hours of your subscription. So again, if you don't see that first newsletter within 24 to 48 hours, go back and double check your spam, junk, trash, and promotion folders uh, to make sure that it's not hidden in there. Also, within that first 24 to 48 hours, we're going to send you uh, at least one or two emails with links to training videos that are for subscribers only. So please make sure that you're looking at all of this because it's extremely important for you to get the most out of your subscription, please watch those, uh, those videos that are part of the training material that we send you. 
Now let's recap what you will get with your Simple Market Signals subscription. With your subscription, you will receive the weekly emailed newsletter, which goes out on the weekends, that will include all of the content that we just talked about. Plus, you will receive midweek update emails when warranted. So if there's a major signal or trend direction change in the middle of the week, we're not going to wait until the weekend to get you that information. We're going to send a midweek update email to get you that information as soon as possible. So again, a subscription to Simple Market Signals is just $19.95 per month. That's less than $0.67 cents a day. It's billed monthly on your credit card. There are no contracts. You can cancel any time, and your first two weeks are free. To get started, just go to https colon two forward slashes simplemarketsignals.com.